Hello and welcome back to yet another stream. Today we're moving on to the second project in the Information Security and Quality Assurance projects. We're going to be tackling an issue tracker, which if I thought the last project would have been simple, this this is going to be a uh, this is going to be rather interesting to say the least. Um, but yeah, let's let's have a look at what we're kind of expected to create. So we need to prevent cross-site scripting, so we'll just use Helmet for that. I can post API issues with form data containing with form data containing required issue title, issue text created by an optional assignment. Open, Boolean true for open, with a value to object. So huh. But we didn't get a we didn't get an ID when we submitted or anything. That's interesting. Let's try it again. All right. That's wonderful. So this doesn't do anything. <laughs> it's just broken. <sighs> Don't you love that? So let's first clone the uh, repository. And let's see if glitch will work for once. Doubt it, but uh, we can just try, right? If it doesn't work, nope, something went wrong. Yay, glitch never disappoints. Centered punishment, I just love the uh, automated name for this. So let's delete this project, and what we're going to do is simple. We're going to take this, and we're going to Enter edit. And then the name of it is going to be the name of their project. See that? Protective Garage. And then we'll basically just make a copy of that. I think that'll be the easiest. So we remix to edit. So that will at least have all of the... Uh, the uh, required fields and stuff and then obviously we'll just edit the files as we go because I'm going to clone it locally as well so we're going to clone this and this is going to be the issue issue tracker All right, there we are. Imperium, bruh, why is it a pain to study even if it's something you like? Um, I guess sometimes you just get over it and you want to do something else. So it's important to make time um, to do things that you enjoy. So like take a weekend. What I try to do is um, work weekdays and then the weekends I try to just relax, do nothing. So kind of Mondays, like, uh, like today, it feels like, uh, but you kind of get into it again. You kind of just have to force yourself. And then once you do, it gets easier than Tuesday, Wednesday. By Wednesday, I'm just like, yeah, come on, let's go. Um, and then the weekend comes and you kind of just unwind again. Uh, but yeah, just kind of do things that you enjoy to mix it up. And just remind yourself uh, why you're studying, you know. You're working towards um, something bigger that's going to make your life 
so much easier and it's going to open up many you know possibilities for you so try to look at the end goal not how you're currently feeling and Boki, hey how are you doing I haven't seen you in a while I'm doing good yeah I managed to relax this weekend played some destiny 2 really uh, enjoying that game and I was like kind of set back with these projects because I thought like the uh, Imperial um, metric converter would have been done in like a day. <laughs> but that ended up taking like the entire week. I did not expect that. So yeah, it's good to also realize that sometimes expectations are a whole lot different. Take a small break while eating. Started doing some Express and Mongo. Nice! How are you finding Express? Are you enjoying it? And Mongo's a lot of fun. I'm going to have to be uh, doing that right now actually for this issue tracker because I'm going to have to be saving the data in the database. And Express is basically like the staple framework that I'm going to need for this uh, backend server. Okay, so let's get this, uh, let's get this project started. Extract here. Um, what don't we need? We don't need this bash file, we don't need git config, we don't need this, we don't need that, uh, we don't need the readme. Do we? No, we don't need the readme. Okay, so this is going to be our folder structure, and let's add this folder structure into... Uh, Where the hell are these npm packs? Where are we now? Oh, okay. Um, so I should probably add the issue tracker. Come on. As interesting as front end, it's simple so far. Yeah, I find back end to like be way more enjoyable. And the uh and the front end. Hold on, why is this still here? Remove issue tracker, there we go. And let us open in terminal. And then the other thing that we need to do is just copy our prettier ESLint settings as well. Maybe package.json. What else? Yeah. I think that's good. And then call this package 2, just so that I could do a comparison, so that I can open that there, and open the original one. And then this is going to be FCC um, issue tracker, part of FCC FreeCodeCamp security and quality assurance projects. Yeah, that's fine. Mm. So they want Express, so we're going to use Express, Chorus, God Chorus, Body Parser, Cool, Chai, MongoDB, Chai, CTP, Mocha, Zombie, Helmet. Yeah, it's pretty much the same as the last project. Engines, we're going to use version 10 of Node. They were still using 4.4.3. Um, what else? I think that's all. Yeah, and then we have our dev dependencies. That's pretty much it. The quickest setup that I've ever done before. You see, guys? It gets quicker and quicker, huh? Easier and easier. So now all we need to do is, let me delete package2.json, and then we're just going to do npm install to install all of those in the, um, dependencies. Oof. Why do we have an issue? Hold on. Four? Yes, learn plugin? It's almost like my firewall is blocking it, but that's weird. That's never happened before. Let's try again. Huh. Okay. Let me just uh, sort my firewall real quick. Let's try that again. There we go. That's weird, my firewall has never blocked that before. Hmm. 
Come on, you can do it. Finish up. Oh, I see the other issue now. We can't open the file. Okay, but that's old. Let's see what happens when it's done. The cool thing about this stuff, even if modules fail to install properly or whatever, it doesn't affect your code. You know, you just have to sort the module installation out. That's all in your package JSON. So whatever goes on here, it's not going to affect our code at all. It's still going to write our code. I can always debug that later. Cool. But it seems like everything is set up fine now. Firewall is secure. Hmm. Okay, we're good to start. So. First things first, let's sort all of this out. Man, I don't even know where to begin with this one. There's so many things. So that's issue.html. So that should be double quotes. I don't know why that's single quotes, whoever did that in HTML. Fix that. Um, why are all of these things in single quotes? It's almost like they forgot. Hey guys, HTML is double quotes. JavaScript can be single or double. Can't prettier fix this for me? Ah. <sighs> I'm just going to have to do a batch. It's weird because some places they use double quotes. And some places they use single. Okay, I think that's it. I don't think we have any issues now here. Oh, except for margin. There you go. Why is there a space there? That's why I don't like them giving us boilerplates like this, because you end up having to fix the issues, or it's like subjective, you know, like, I don't want to do it this way. Center, the only real way to center something. <laughs> right? What even is that? Is that like a valid tag? Like, that was from ages ago. Does that even exist anymore? I remember that from like, not supporting HTML5, yeah. Who the hell uses that anymore? Okay, so what were they trying to center? Why don't you just do this, div? Like, we're supposed to be advanced and they can't even do basic CSS stuff. Class equal to center, right? And then in our public style.css, you create a dot center and you go text align center. There you go, problem solved. Hmm? Unless you want to center the entire div, in which case we could just do, um, we could just do, sorry, I'm trying to think now. Um, what do you call it? My favorite. Justify contents align item center. Why can't I think right now? That thing, that beautiful thing. Anyway, I think you guys know what I'm talking about. I have no idea what they're even trying to center, so we'll deal with it when we actually get there. Okay, so that's that, that's that. Tests, we're not going to worry about now. Roots, fucking hell, I don't know where to begin with this. It's like they throw us in a deep end. So, we're going to need to get a, a connection. But we can do that afterwards. We need to start somewhere. 
we need to prevent cross-site scripting. Um, so that's going to happen when we install Helmet. Is Helmet set up and running? I don't see it here. Is Helmet in our package.json? Helmet is. So we need to, before anything else, once app has been instanced here, we just use app.use helmet. So now we have the protection of helmet. Oh, but helmet is not defined either. Of course it's not. Um, how about here? Straight off the express const helmet equal to require helmet. There you go. And then app.use helmet. Great stuff. So now helmet is set up. Now we have basic protection from XSS attacks which was the uh, the very first requirement. Second one is I can post API issues project name. Okay, so what's project name? With form data containing, oh, so it's an object, I assume. With form data containing required issue title, so title, text, created by, and optional assigned to, and status text. Okay. So something like this. There'll be a form here, I guess. Hey bud, I've got a few minutes before I head out to study handpans. Hey, so all of you are here, we're having a productive Monday. What are all of you getting up to? So Imperium's kind of trying to struggle to study, but I mean it is a Monday. Boki's busy with some Express and Mongo, which is cool. Netly, you're trying to update your website? Are you trying to also rest your brains? This has been a busy day. And handpans, what's up with you? Okay, let's slowly start migrating all of this stuff. So there's server, right? And then we're going to need package.json to come across as well. And um, we're going to need to change things like in view. Issue.html under views. Like so. And then we're also going to need... Wait. Wait. Issue.html. That one's issue. I think we edited index. Index stays the same, whatever that is. Cool. Uh, why are the issues? What's wrong? The ID must be unique. Oh my god. Oh my god, look at all these errors. Must be in double quotes. Yeah, of course it should be, but it's like they don't follow best practices. <laughs> Who does single quotes in HTML? I don't understand. So now I have to sit here and fix all this stuff in a boilerplate. <sighs> Can't I just... Hold on. Isn't there... Uh, I'm sure there's a way that I can just manually find and replace. The only problem with that is I'm worried that it will actually replace single quotes that are legitimate. And I don't feel like going through that. And there's only like 10 issues, so... Might as well resolve it manually. Okay, you know what? I'm just going to do it. Find and replace. And then... Okay, hold on. Because this is just annoying the shit out of me right now. Um... Find every instance of that. Go. Okay, so... Replace. See, there. That's the issue. That's why you don't want it there. Okay, so we leave that. Go, 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 go. There. Replace. Replace. Replace, replace. Replace, replace. Um, replace, replace. Replace, replace. Replace, replace. Replace, replace. See, now here it's fine. In JavaScript, single quotes are valid. So that's not the issue. It's just when it's in HTML, you need to use double quotes. What's wrong here? Test form 2 needs to be unique. Why would they have two forms with the same ID? Why? Why? I don't understand. Oh my god. 
Wait, do they have test from today? Did they accidentally like... You know what I think they did? Because look here, they have test form, they have test form 2, and they have test form 3. I think they literally copy-pasted. <laughs> yeah, they did. There's no test form 3. Test form 2 was supposed to be test form 3. Oh my god. We're fixing bugs. We haven't even begun the project. We're still fixing the boilerplate. Good job. Uh, there's still one issue. Where's the issue? Um, the issue must be in double quotes. Uh, what's the issue? I don't see it. Oh. In JavaScript, you can do that without quotes for Boolean values. But in HTML, every parameter needs to be in double quotes. Cool. That's solved. Uh, let's see. Sorry, guys. I need a new project. You should work on something with me. What do you got in mind? Applying for jobs. Control F. Yeah. Yeah. We got that. Um, maybe that's a bug you need to fix. <laughs> How is that though? Like we get given a project and the boilerplate is already, already has issues. That's just hilarious. Um, I need to replace the roots because I copied their project because once again, it's broken and I don't want the solutions. I obviously do things very different to them. So I'm going to go and overwrite this because there's is already complete, you know? Okay, we're not going to touch FCC testing because we learned from last time what happens there. Um, public style, I think I did update style to add like that center tag. So let me just go and update that. Um, yeah, I think that's it. There's luckily not too many files this time around. So let's give this a name. Um, FCC, oh no, it's DMN um, issue tracker. That's what we're going to call it. And then let's open up one of my previous projects, metric. Just to get the name thingy over here. Oh, I didn't name this one. Um, what is one of the other ones that I've done? Exercise tracker? Yeah, I guess we can open that one. I have two projects in mind that might be fun, yeah? What kind of projects are those? Actually, can I just use what I have in my package.json, part of free code camps? Part of free code camps, information security and quality assurance projects. Yeah, there we go. I'm just going to name it that and then that and then show a new window and then we can get rid of that and there we go there's ours cool there we go we got ours up and running now we need to listen for the post because right now i assume just nothing's gonna happen yeah i don't even know why it doesn't post maybe there's no like method or something on it um wait server what is it rendering if you get the root you will see views index.html okay so this is what we're currently seeing um god it's such a freaking mess holy shit the first form is this test form it has no action that's why it's like literally doing nothing like, I don't know why they gave us a boilerplate if it does nothing. Like, you know what I mean? Action. Uh, post. Um, Enc type. Application. Form URL encoded. Actually, wait. No. We want multi-part, don't we? Does it matter? Are we going to send any file? I don't think we are. I forgot. Type. Um, where are we going to post to? What's our API? Hold on. Our API is... I can post to API issues. So API issues. And whatever afterwards is the project name. 
Okay, so let's just post the API issues for now. I don't think we're going to use a file, so you know what, I'm going to leave ank type out because by default it's going to set it to um, the right encoding type, so I'm going to leave that out. One is for a game that has an online auction house, but you can't ban scammers. So I want to make a ban list that users could use. Huh. Online auction house, a game. So would you just trade in like a virtual economy? Two is to make a pizza gifting app for Twitch. Really? Like you give someone pizza? How many issues did you track so far? <laughs> Bucky, way too many. I should have literally put all these issues in the issue tracker. And then we need a method. Post. So post, well actually let's do method first. And then post, I don't know. Method, post, action, where it's going to go to. Okay, so now it's going to try and send you to... What the hell? Where's the button? Type submit. This is still part of the same form? Oh, right. I keep forgetting we're not working locally. That's so annoying. Okay, so it's going to try to do nothing again. What the hell? Console. Why? What's wrong with the form? The hell? Did they disable forms or something? Test form. Submit E. Oh. URL. API issues. API test. Post. Data. Test form. Serialize. Success. Oh, so they prevent default on it. That's why. They're using Ajax. What? Come on. Really? 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 No oh, man. Get out of here. Get rid of all this script shit. Are we using jQuery for anything else? Because I'm going to get rid of that as well. I don't think we are, huh? I think the only jQuery they're using was for the Ajax. What year are we in again? Are we doing it this way? Okay, there we go. So this should now solve the fact that I couldn't post. Ancient project recycled. <laughs> Just give me my goddamn post back, please. Bloody hell. Can I now post, please? Thank you. Appreciate it. Finally. Cool, now that we can actually post and we're not living in a draconic era, um, we can move on to the root. So, API issues project. The only thing that I'm thinking of now is what what is the project going to be? Is the project going to be the name of the project? What is the first field? Title. Is that what they meant by that? Is title going to be the project? I could post API issues project name. Where does it get project name? Title? What is project name? I assume project title, title is going to be the project name, right? No, but that wouldn't make sense because you could have many issues for one project. Let's say issue tracker is the project, but then the title is this issue and that issue and that issue. Oh, okay. So forward slash project name. So that would just be anything you put in. So forward slash FCC. And then under that, it would fall under that. Okay. Um, okay, never mind. That makes sense. So, 
but for that form it still doesn't make sense unless I added another field you know what I mean because how's this thing supposed to know which project name you're going to be posting to oh submit issue on API test right there that wasn't clear okay so we need to change our post to go to API Wait, what the hell? Oh. API issues, API test, right? Is that where we're posting to? API issues? Because they say I could post to, and this is on API test. Okay. That's what was confusing. So now it should post to API test. And that is what we need to work under. So under API, API issues, that's the project. And can we please get an arrow function in here? Because that's really annoying me. Um, project is assigned a value but never used. That's going to be project right there. So then I want to log the project. Um, project, like so. And then let's give this a try. Why are we using use strict? Come on. Really? My fuck. Didn't serve. Oh my god. Who uses use strict now with ES6? <sighs> okay, so that's server and under API. There we go. So now we should get something. Let's open our logs. If the stream was here one week earlier, I wouldn't know anything, but now I understand good part of the code. Happy. <laughs> That's good, Bucky, and please feel free to ask questions, like, because I'm going to be setting up a, a node back in server pretty much from scratch, as you'll see now. I'll, I also have to set up Mongo um, and Mongoose. Probably Mongoose, I don't know. It depends. And then also set up um, collections and stuff like that. So if there's anything you want to know, ask, please don't hesitate. And handpans regarding the projects, when did you when did you want to start those? Because I'd preferably like to finish these projects and just be done with free code camp. I've got like four more projects. Now I'm done completely. Then I'm free to do whatever. Okay, so if we post this should post to API test. So test, test, blah blah, whatever, don't care. Submit. We should get should have got something here. Should have console logged. Wait, this is not wrapped in a database connection, is it? No, should be fine. Module.exports function app. So it's... What? Okay, so it's exporting this as app, and then you get pass in app so that you can go app.root. Okay, so they set up their routing like this. So that's in server, probably, where they set that up. Um... Wait, they set up the roots. This project. There's API roots require roots, api.js, and then API roots passing an app. Great. Okay, but what happened to Are we posting to API issues? We are. API issues and then the project, right? Uh, let me double check. Uh, submit. API issues. API test. Yeah. It should have logged the project. Res.json. No, wait. Res send got here how about that we'll probably be here to see that cool yeah I just wanted to respond to me what have they done
Oh, never mind. The way they... Oh, my God. <sighs> wow. They literally specified every verb. Get, post, put, delete. Like... They, oh, my God. Okay. Why? Wow. <sighs> okay. So the reason that they work is because they separated each one. The first one's a get, second one's a post, put, delete. They split it all up. So we need it in post because that's where we're posting right now. And then I could just do res.send. Hi, Boki! Just for you. Once we post. There you go. So there's the post and there's the project API test. Cool. So now that we're we know that we're posting to API test, what's the what's the next requirement? With form data okay, so next we need to see what the form data is. I wanna know everything that is in request.parameters. So log the params request.params. And it should be the same ID that is in our Okay, so the params are project API test. There's nothing else, just that, really? Oh, right. The body. I didn't mean parameter. There's only one parameter. I need to know what's in the body of the uh, the form. This is the best issue ever. Just random text. Okay, so what's in the body? Um, we have issue title, issue text, created by, assigned to, and status text. Brilliant. So now we have all of that. The only thing I'm not happy with is that it's underscored like that. But it's fine. I'm not going to bother changing that. What I am going to do, however, is this. Okay, so we want... const oh I can't even extract them now because they look like that I want to see something can I do can I do this I can't remember from the spread operator if this works Yeah, it wants it to be in camel case. Or was it like this, the other way around? I think it was this way. And then the issue title, issue title, like so. And let's just see if that works. Come on. Uh, something went wrong. Great. Wake me up. <sighs> Come on, glitch. Is glitch down again? No, oh, glitch is fine. They don't like my project. There we go. And then let us load the main page. Let's post run data and hope that this is the value I'm looking for. OK, 
Yeah, so what we're looking for is the issue title. Perfect. That did work. Brilliant. So all we're going to do is we're going to use this. Um, yeah, that should work, right? Yeah, so we use destructuring here, and because the ID is issue underscore title, we reference it as that, but we name it issue title. Because otherwise, imagine using this. We don't, you know, you want to use camel case in JavaScript. It's just a standard, and I would much rather work with that than that. So our option is either we go in here and we change issue title to be camel case, but generally you'd write IDs like that in HTML anyway. Um, so yeah, we could just do it this way. It comes in as issue underscore title, but we're going to map the value of that from request.body to issue title. So then we could use it as issue title. And then the rest of the stuff, we do the same for issue underscore text, which will become issue text. And we do the same for created by which will become created by we do the same for assigned to which will become assigned to uh, and then lastly status underscore text which will be status text there we go because then we could just use all of those variables and we map them and we get them from the uh, request body Um, now we have like the basics to put into our database already because we have the issue title, the text, the created by, the assigned to, and the status text. Now, in terms of how we're going to save this in a database, I assume we would need an issues table and then a document for each project. In this case, it would be called API test because that's the project. I'm going to leave this in just so we know what project we're working on. And then let me go to my database setup and let me just create a table for this. And I don't think I'm going to struggle with MongoDB. I think I'm going to straight up just use Mongoose. They said nothing about that in the requirements. And if you have a database driver that helps you, um, something that helps you with your database driver, then why not, right? Mongoose just makes it such a breeze working with MongoDB. Especially when I don't have to deal with atomic operations. Okay, so collections. It's still going to be free code camp DB. I'm just going to create a new collection called issues. Did I call it issues or? Yeah, I mean, it makes sense, right? Issues. And then one new issue for every issue. And 
And then what I need to quickly do is just set up the database, which you guys won't see just momentarily. MongoDB URI. Okay, so let's go here. Give me just a moment, guys. Call it MongoDB underscore URI. And that is going to be a string. What else are we going to need? I think it's just that. And then make sure it connects to the right database, which is FreeCodeCamp DB. Yeah, there we go. That should be all it needs. And let me set up mongoose. Um, terminal. npm install mongoose. Acorn JSX requires a peer of huh, there's no nothing to update. Okay, so we got mongoose now. And then wherever we use the database connection. Are they just going to have everything in the API? They're not even going to have it in like... It looks like it. So const... Mongoose equal to require. Mongoose... No, mongoose... There we go. And then let me go and reference So we need this. So we've already done that. And then we connect to the database, mongoose.connect, process.env.mongouri, which I've already set up, use new URL parser, true. So we don't need the connection string anymore. Um, so that should give us a connection to the database right now. And then we're gonna create a schema, which is gonna be something similar to this. And then because that would normally be in a separate file, but since they're gonna do everything in one file, might as well have everything here right now. So this is gonna be based on the stuff we have. So like things like issue title, that's gonna be a string, issue text, that's gonna be a string as well. Um Boki, you still here?
Bokki. So we do new issue, and that's going to be an object which takes in the things that we need. So issue title, which we already have, issue text, issue wait created by, assign to, as well as status text. So we have a new issue object now. It's a mongoose model that has issue title, issue text, created by assigned to status text. This will all be saved to the database. And then we need to issue.save. Because I think I'm going to use async await this time to make things cleaner. Because that was the old way of doing it. When I look at the promise, Let's add issue title. The issue issue title has been added. And this will be mongoose. Would it be issue.db? Oh, it would be the actual returned object. So in this case, it would be... Yeah, it would be issue.
So I'd have to save, but I don't have to return it. I could just do issue dot save then It's an issue tracker. I can't call it issue because it's been declared there. So this would be mm, what do I call this? Load response res dot db dot close. Our res is already ah. I usually name mine response when it comes in a then. So then response and then response. change the scope of this a little bit? And we're not going to know what issue title is, so you have to do a response that issue title. There we go. Okay, so that should be it when you post. Let's give it a try. Can I find module mongoose? That is because we did an update package.json where we added mongoose. Okay, <clears throat> the other thing is, did we do process.env.mongo, I think it's mongodb uri, not mongo uri. Yeah, there you go. So it is MongoDB, you're all right. Let's not forget that. Cool, so now it's connected. That means that we should be able to post to the, uh, to the database. Test, this is a test. Dead mono, assigned to dead mono. Data's text, pending, submit issue. The issue test has been added, okay. 
Now let's go see in the database if it actually did add it. Okay, so under issues we have one. And there it is, issue title test. <laughs> cool. This is a test created by Deadmano, assigned to Deadmano status text pending. That actually worked. Cool. The only problem now is that under issues, it's not nested. So you don't know what project it falls under. Would I have a sub document of a sub document? And then an array of issues? No, I don't think so. There's probably a better way of doing it, but I think for now I'm just going to have them be under project. What are the requirements that it wants us to do? I can put with a ID and any fields in the object with a value to object set object return will be successfully updated or could not update ID. This should always update updated on if no fields are sent. Jesus, what English is this? Like I could not understand that. But based on what put would be, that would just be an update to an existing um, issue and then delete with a ID. So I wonder what ID they're referring to. The object saved and returned will include all of those fields, blank for optional no input, and also include created on, updated on, open, true for open, false for closed. How would you know if it's open or closed? Is that what the status text is? Perhaps. And ID. Okay, so would ID be... Should it just be based on the ID in the database, maybe? Probably. Because that ID looks like... Yeah, that ID looks like a Mongo ID. So this method will be uh, put. And then that will be delete. That should be easy enough. You find an issue. Maybe let's try that. Delete will be the easiest to implement and also get us somewhere. So let us do delete. Okay, so method is post. Um, isn't there, is it a post? Yeah, it is a post. And then action, API issues, API test. We're gonna go to API test, right? But that would have to be a delete um, in HTML, because isn't there a delete? There's post, there's delete.
Browser doesn't support put and delete. That's a problem. Unless that's changed. So I might have to use Axios. Yep, we're going to have to use Axios. So, npm... Wait, but this is on the... On the front end. Oh, that should be fine. npm install Axios. And then here, or maybe we don't have to, um, we could just use UN PKG. Actually, yeah, let's do that. NPM uninstall Axios. And then what we'll do, we'll just use it as a script like they did. So we'll have Axios like that. And then we're going to need an on submit um, function. So do something like Delete project. Delete issue. Oh my god, come on. And that's going to be a Axios request. So then we could do something like Axios URL API What was it? API Issues API test <laughs> Not URK, ERK URL and then the method is going to be delete. And we need a payload as well. Unless I could do axios dot delete and then have the URL because then it'll be shorter without the method. 
So then I can have it like that. And then the second parameter would be the ID. Delete an issue. Placeholder name is ID. Yeah, it should literally just be that. <laughs> Why is it duplicate IDs though? Name ID. And then this will need to be a URL. This will just be the direct entry. And then hopefully that's ID. And then that's delete issues so that when we go to delete method equal to, well, there's no method and there's no action. We would literally just do on, on submit run delete issue and then delete issue will run and then let's make sure that this is running by just console logging that and then we're also okay so let's update index.html like so and then let us also change delete I want to know what delete body, what is in the body that gets posted, request.body under API. Okay, so when I delete like 234, what happens? Literally nothing changed. Did it not like post Axios or anything? No? Weird. I should be able to use Axios directly now. Axios.delete API issues API test and we should have logged that but Hold on, unless the on submit is wrong. On submit, delete issues, that's the form. Button type submit. So it should have been fine. Weird. Unless it's, wait, is it logging here? Oh, there you go. Reference ID is not defined. I think I know what I need to do. Let's call this delete. So just call it delete ID and then do ID document dot get element by ID delete ID like so. and then send through ID. And see what happens. 
Request aborted? Why? Why did the request get aborted? That's weird. No error, nothing, just request aborted. Axios.delete API issues API test. So that's a URL that it's going to try to send a delete request to. I don't think that'll make a difference, but let me try anyway. Axios Delete does support a request body, accepts two parameters, URL and optional config. You can use config.data to set the response body as follows. Axios.delete, so we got the URL, then you need data. Oh, so I need a data object. Is that what I'm missing? Okay, hold on. So, Axios.delete, that's the URL, and I need data. Data. And then inside of that, you have the ID. Okay, let's try that again. Oh, the request is still aborted. Because I mean, I could just specify a delete keyword in a GET request, but then we wouldn't get the delete option. So this is what we want. Axios to delete URL, data, the payload, then Let's try the secondary option. Axios delete URL. I've already got that. Data. Maybe data needs to be set to like ID? You know what I just realized? That's get element by ID. We also didn't do value. Or inner yeah, value, because we need value from that. We're getting the entire element. Try this one. Weird. So we still get the request aborted. That's so weird, unless it's something to do with... The only thing I could think of it is course, maybe? If course isn't set up, but it is. And that's before anything else. There can't be a course issue, 
Unless credentials need to be sent through as well, maybe. But yeah, I think that's something I'm gonna have to um, continue with and check tomorrow. Because I've run out of time currently. So I'm gonna have to come back to this. But I think we did uh, pretty good for a start. We can we can add issues. So I'll show you guys. Here's an example issue. This is the issue created by me, assigned to. We can skip these because they're optional. And then if I go to the database, I'll show you guys what it looks like. I just need to make sure that they're under projects because right now they're not so you you don't know what they belong to so let's go here and this is what it looks like so you can see here test this it this was the previous one this is one that I just did now an example issue this is the issue created by me assigned to and status text are both blank because they're uh, they were omitted and they're optional so yeah that's that's pretty cool I'm happy with that and I will continue this tomorrow where we just need to figure out the Axios posting so that we can actually delete something and then it's simple as matching the ID and if we get a match we delete it updating is just finding an existing document and updating the fields and yeah this one seems to be easier than the first one I don't want to say that and like jinx it but so far so good so yeah, I'm going to continue with this tomorrow. Thank you to everyone that came through. I really appreciate it. So good seeing all of you and hearing how you guys are progressing. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Until then, bye for now.